Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool. I wanted to show you a video on doing presets in Lightroom. I'm gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna show how not just to make the presets, how to apply the presets, but how I also have to use the presets in other parts of my workflow when I'm doing real estate. Now you can use this for just about everything, especially if you're doing landscape photography, you're doing nature photography, doing portraits, having presets is vital to speeding up your workflow. I'm just gonna show you through the real estate workflow how I do it. In the middle of all that is also another action. If you remember on my last video, I showed how to make actions in Photoshop. There's an action that I use almost every single time, and it's for auto-aligning layers. Now, in my last video, I showed how to make a very simple action. This one's actually gonna be very simple too, but it's very useful, and I think that you'll find it also useful as well. So I'm gonna take from start to finish, Everything that I would have to do, I'm gonna make a preset, gonna apply a preset, I'm gonna take those layers, I'm gonna edit them in Photoshop, I'm gonna show how to actually make then an action in Photoshop to help align those layers. I'm gonna then edit those pictures in Photoshop. When I'm done, they're gonna come back in the Lightroom and I'm gonna apply another preset to that. So you can see there's a lot of stuff in the workflow that requires the presets and actions. Now, it's gonna be a long video, but the process would only take maybe about a minute maybe three minutes worst case scenario on a very difficult picture that I'd have to process. That's how this can really speed things up for you. So without further ado and make this video any longer than it needs to be for you, let's take a look at using presets in Lightroom from start to finish. Let's go. So here's a shot that I set aside. There's actually four frames. This is an ambient shot. This is a flash shot. This is a repair shot for a window pull and you can see I'm using the Rove light blasting the heck out of this window to get that beautiful view of the outside but there's definitely some problems so to be able to fix that problem right there I'm gonna be using this repair frame but as you can see there's already this this is not a very good picture there's a lot of distortion here I didn't get my verticals right I was actually trying to do kind of a pseudo tilt shift and you can see Rich Baum's video on how to do that check out Rich Baum B-A-U-M for his videos on YouTube you'll find a lot of useful stuff there including what he calls the fake tilt shift and that's what I was doing here to just get a little bit more floor into the picture so anyways I would use a preset normally on this that would correct everything but I'm going to make it with you from a start to finish. So first thing I would do when I bring in a photo like this, and once again, presets are for everything that you would do repetitively. And normally I would bring it in basic and I'd say enable those profile corrections. Yeah, got rid of some of that warp. Remove chromatic aberrations, although on this lens I really don't have much of a problem with it. Now adjust for those verticals by clicking that vertical button. Now that looks pretty good. I like that, but I want to go even further. I want to sharpen this up. Default sharpen at 25. I'm going to bump that up even more, and I want to add a mask. If you've never done this before, as you move the masking slider, hold down your Alt key and move that, and where you see the black, that's not being sharpened, only the white is. So I like that. So we're going to move that up to where it's sharpening like around, oh, a mask of 22. Love it. Now, I want to be able to use this for future photos, future shoots that I do, not just for the photos I'm working on right now. So to save that preset, I just go up here under the presets uh, section. If it's not open, you just have to click that little doodad there. And then save preset. And then I'm just going to put it under my user presets. And let's call this one standard correction. Now I can decide what all is applied here. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use everything. But you can play around with this to, to have a variety of different presets to do only certain specific things to photos to make it quick. But for this workflow, we're just going to go ahead and create that particular preset. Fine. That's fantastic. Let's take this picture. Let's take it back to where we first imported it. Remember how it looked? Now I can say, you know what, I like that. Let's see how it looks if I do a standard correction. I'm just gonna hit my standard correction preset and it did everything for me that we just did manually. So I could take this now and say, you know what, this is great. I'm gonna apply that preset to all these pictures, but there's more that I might wanna do here. For instance, this uh, might have just a little bit of horizontals that are off. So I might want to go into the manual mode here, check my horizontals. And just for sake of argument, I'm just going to tweak them just a tad. They were actually okay, but I'm just going to do that just a tad. So they're just up like that. Now that's good. Now that's my preset plus other adjustments. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead now and right click on this picture. Because once again, my preset's done. I've made it. Other shoots I do, I'm going to be able to use that preset. 
But in this case, I want to finish my editing process. So I'm going to take this picture that I applied my preset to and did some tweaks. Go to Develop Settings. I'm going to copy the settings from that guy. I'm going to copy all those settings. Now I'm going to select all the pictures that I wanted for that picture. Right click, then Develop Settings and Paste Settings. Now all those pictures are going to be adjusted and changed. Fantastic. Now I want to blend those. So I right click again and I say Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now Photoshop's going to open this up and my next step that I would do in my workflow is I have a, a, an action made that's called uh, Auto Align. Now I want to uh, Auto Align these because I have actually been touching my camera so during the process. So that's why I always do the Auto Align layers. I'm going to make that action with you. So if you recall from the last video, there's an action button that I keep off to the side and you can just click on that and you get the action window. If you don't see that anchored someplace, just go up to Window and go to Actions, and that's Alt F9. And once you do that, you'll see this. Now, also from the uh, last tutorial, there was this Toot 1. And uh, I'm going to make a new uh, action in here. And so I'm just going to click this right here. And I'm going to call this Line My Layers, dude. Got to spell dude right. And then I can assign this a function key. So I'm going to assign this right now to, let's say, uh, F11. Cool. I can say F11 Shift, F11 Control, so that I can have keystroke combinations in here. But I'm just going to do F11 on this. Now I'm going to say Record. Now to make this Auto Align action, it's a matter of going to Select All Layers. You can see it selected all layers. Then I'm going to go to Edit Auto Align Layers, and I'm going to let it do Auto. I click OK, and it does its little Auto Align diddly wop. Boom, done. Now I'm going to stop recording. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this means. I'm going to back out of here. We don't want to save this right now. Why? Because I want to show you what it had been like in the workflow. So you see in the workflow what I did, I was able to say, you know what, I took one picture. I was able to take that one picture and do the standard correction on it, did some other tweaks, went ahead and I took those settings, develop settings, copy and paste them. I had all these, then I would right click and I'd go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And if you've ever watched Rich, Rich Baum's video, by the way, he's got some great videos on YouTube. His last name is B-A-U-M. You'll see that he takes a sip of something while this is happening, and that's just exactly what I'm going to do right now. So as those are loading, I'm going to be doing one other thing, and that would be to, after it's done loading, I'm going to go ahead and hit the F10 key. That's auto align. So as soon as I see those loaded, I'm hitting the, excuse me, is the F11 key, and that's going to do the auto align. All I did was hit F11, and you can see it selected all the layers. It's doing the auto align. Boom. And we can see that auto align happened, and I did touch my camera because you can see down here it's off. Sure enough. So now I have my layers all lined up. Now I could make other actions to hit a key and do a mask and change this one to luminosity and, and on and on and on. But I'm going to just do these right now manually just real quick. I'm going to then take those back into uh, Lightroom and I'm going to apply another preset. So this is my luminosity layer, my uh, ambient. So I'm going to set that to luminosity mode, layer mask hide. This one right here is my base layer. I love it. And then these other two are for my window pull and repair. So let's just go ahead and work with this one right now. To do this flambient type stuff, you've seen me do it before, and also Rich Baum's great at this. Once again, his video is over at uh, Rich Baum on YouTube, B-A-U-M. I've got the brush, I've got the flow set at about 8%, and I'm starting to brush in some ambient. Now I've got some real, it's getting rid of that flashy look, and also filling in any of those dark spots I wasn't able to get the light in. Now I like a little bit of shine on the floor. I know some people, it drives them nuts with that. And over here, this should be darker. Uh, that was for my flash over here. So I'm able to darken that up over here. Now once again, this process here that I'm doing takes me, oh, probably about 20, 30 seconds. That was too much, control Z. But look at that shadow over here. I'm gonna get rid of that shadow as much as I can. And that ceiling should have a lot more light hitting it than what we have. So let's do that. That looks natural. And this might bug a lot of people seeing that light there, but that's natural. That's life. That's, that's part of what these pictures actually consist of. So I'm lightening that up. I really like the look of that. That's fantastic. Okay. And you got to get in the corner. Let me zoom out so I can really get down here 
<clears throat> excuse me, since I'm doing this for a tutorial, I'm not going to spend as much time. I'm kind of concentrating right now and being a little distracted on what I can do for this to show you everything that I would normally do. So anyways, I like the look of that as an ambient. So, and once again, without that, with it, that's pretty good. I'm going to dig it. Okay, now I want to do my window pull. So I'm going to take my window pull layer, I'm going to go up here. You can see there's my rove light. I'm going to change him to a darken mode, okay? Now the trick is to doing darken mode is don't forget that when you flash this area here, when you're flashing that window, you have to overexpose the window frame. That's why when I change it from normal to darken, you can see that anything that was overexposed just is uh, avoided. It's just not even used. So boom, there we go. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to go up to 100% opacity. I'm going to go ahead and layer mask hide. And now I'm going to paint those windows in. Okay, so let's go here and we'll just go ahead and paint those windows in. And I love using the uh, tablet. I'm using a, a bamboo Wacom tablet to do this. I know some people get nuts using it. It's, I don't use it for everything. Sometimes too, if I'm in a hurry, I just might use a mouse. But when I have a lot of control and I need it for something like this, and this was a pretty big house and a lot of different cutouts I was doing for stuff. So I just, I feel kind of good having this uh, control of like it was a, a pen that was in my hand. So there, I've got that window pull filled in. And we'll go ahead and finish these windows off here too. See how dark that's getting? I'm going to correct that too. There's some other correction stuff that needs to be taken care of here from, you can see, my flash did a number. So let's start repairing that. Let's bring up the repair layer up here. And I can just go ahead and take him up here. And he's going to be over top. And I'm going to go layer mask hide. Now I'm going to zoom in on these problem areas. And I'm going to take the brush. And I'm going to take my brush down in opacity once again. I'm going to take it down to 8%. Okay. Now I can go ahead and start painting in this. And I'm doing it real low so I don't overlap anything. This is the other thing too, I'm using the tablet. I'm just like, I'm just scribbling back and forth as though I were using a pen. You can see that corrected. Now I can get really close here too and probably correct some of this here. And I could cut that out. And I believe on the final product I did, but look what's happening on natural shot, wood is coming in. So we'll just go ahead and leave that off. Okay, so I'm going to correct a little bit more up here. I see some reflection. You might not be able to see it on this YouTube video. And then, of course, over here, we got a real mess going on. So let's, let's go ahead and correct some of that going on right here. We'll go ahead and fill that in where we can. There's a bunch of flare on there. Yeah, you can see the, the flash coming into there hit it so hard it picked up where the streaks that were from the window cleaners didn't actually show up very well there. So able to correct that stuff. Once again, low opacity, excuse me, low flow on this brush gives me a lot of control as I'm going over. I don't have to worry about, oh, I just missed a spot. Oh, I just over hit the wood a little bit. Yeah, it's okay if I hit the wood a little bit like this. Now, the one thing, too, that's happening, I should have probably hit that section down there. That should have been from the darken mode. Now this is really dark out here. One of the things that I would do on my darken mode, a window pull, which is this layer I have selected right here right now, is I'd select an eraser, a low opacity eraser, and I would just go over that just real lightly. That way we don't have, we bring a little bit of natural light back in there, just a little bit like that. Now I might touch that up a little bit more. There's also a little imperfection down here um, that I could fix. I also would do a TV replacement in here, um, but right now I'm just going to go ahead and skip that so I can bring this back into uh, Lightroom. We'll do TV replacements in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll go over here and right click, and I'm going to say flatten image, boom. Now I'm going to do control S, which saves this. Okay. In fact, that's just bugging me. Before I do that, I'm actually just going to fix that. I'm just going to use the spot removal tool, select something near it and go boom. Okay, he's done. That's fine. Okay, now let's resave that. Now when we go back to Lightroom, there's our picture. That's fantastic. If you remember what we started out with, there was our ambient, there was our flash, there was our window pull, and now we've got this. Now this looks pretty good, but I've got another preset, and this is one that I borrowed from Rich Baum, and it's called the RE Full Bump, which he calls his secret sauce. I'm going to go ahead and hit that preset, and you can see, boom, it kind of threw some stuff off. Why? Because that preset has my verticals again. I don't need to change my verticals. But the, one of the things that it did do is it upped the exposure a little bit, it lowered the highlights, it upped the shadows. All these different adjustments here were from that preset. If I didn't do that, you would see all that stuff go away. 
So when I apply my preset, then this happens. Now I can also tweak this. You know what? I want a little bit more highlights maybe in this room. Or I want to bring down the shadows. I like some of the shadows that were there that were on the wood. You know, that looks pretty good. Bring up the whites a little bit more maybe, you know, inside of this. Whatever it is, I've got that preset made. Now, one other thing I have to do is I have to just crop some of this out because I had that alignment issue. And boom, we're basically done. So that was it from start to finish using a preset in the beginning that we applied to correct everything, then using an action in Photoshop to align all those layers so that I can edit it, bring it in, and then apply my final preset. And then the last thing is file, export. I'm going to export that guy as finished, just for this example. And now that we've got an export going out there, the finished product looks like this. And that's how you do presets. I know it was kind of a lengthy video, but if you did it from start to finish, it might take you a minute, maybe three minutes maximum to do something like that. Uh, once you especially get used to doing the flambient blending, that's where a lot of that time comes in where you're painting. And I'm using a bamboo Wacom tablet, makes it a lot faster as I'm going through and I'm just using a pen. So it feels very natural as I'm going through and just painting on what I needed to do. But using the presets and using the actions, that's where the speed came into it. Just click, boom, that's all set. Click, boom, the actions take over and do everything that I needed to. So whenever you find yourself doing a lot of repetitive actions, whether it's in Lightroom or whether it's in Photoshop, Remember, presets and actions. Well, that's all I have for now. I hope you liked the video. And if you want to be updated on other videos like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Once again, thanks for watching and get out there and shoot something.